Hello everyone. Today we are going to design an one-way continuous slab. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design the interior span of a continuous one-way slab for an office floor continuous over T beams spaced at 3 meters. The span L is given as 3 meter. Live load is equal to 4 kN per meter square. Floor finish is 1 kN per meter square. Use concrete M20. FCK is 20 and steel FE 415. FI is 415. Now we are going to find the effective depth and the overall depth of the slab. For the continuous slab, span to depth ratio is 26. The length we know 3 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. 3000 upon 26, it will be 115 millimeter. Let us round that to 120 millimeter. Let us keep the effective cover as 15. And I am going to keep the diameter of the main reinforcement as 10 millimeter. 10 upon 2, it will be 5. When we add these three, we will get the overall depth D as 140 millimeter. Now let us find the effective span. For end span with the one end fixed and the other continuous, or for intermediate spans, the effective span shall be the clear span between the supports. We are redesigning an intermediate span. So the effective span should be taken as the clear span between the supports that is given in the question 3 meter. Now let us make the load calculations. To find the dead load we have to multiply the overall depth D with the unit weight of the concrete that is 25 kN per meter cube. When we do that we will get 3.5. To find the total dead load, we have to add these two. We will get 4.5. Let us keep the dead load as G. The live load is given in the question. Let us keep that as Q. Now we are going to find the ultimate moment and shear. First, we need to find the maximum negative BM at the support next to the end support. In this code book, we have to take page number 36. Here we can see at a support next to the end support. This one is for the dead load and this one is for the live load. With 1 upon 10, we have to multiply GL square and with 1 upon 9, we have to multiply QL square. We are multiplying this with 1.5 because we need a factored movement after calculating we will get 12 kN meter now we have to find the positive bm at the center of the span we have to select these two 1 upon 12 should be multiplied with gl square and 1 upon 10 should be multiplied with ql square finally we will get 10.35 now we need to find the maximum shear force at the support section. We need to select this coefficient. So 0 0.6 into we have to add the dead load and the live load into L. We are multiplying with 1.5 because we need factored shear. For the maximum shear force we will get 22.95 kN. This is the maximum movement. Using this, we have to apply the check for effective depth. We need to apply all of the values inside this formula. V is the breadth 1000. We will get the effective depth as 66. Previously, we have calculated the effective depth as 120. The calculated effective depth is more than this. So, the effective depth D is enough. The section is under reinforced. Using this equation, we can find the area of the steel as 292 mm square. Then we have to check for minimum EAST. We will get 168 mm square. 
which is less than the calculated EAST. So we can proceed with this EAST. We already decided that we would keep 10 mm diameter bars for the main reinforcement. Then using this formula, we can find the spacing. We can round that to 250 mm. So for the negative movement side, we will provide 10 mm diameter bars at the spacing of 250 mm. For the maximum negative and positive BM, we have got approximately equal values. In this case, no need to waste the time and find new area for the positive BM. We can apply the same reinforcement for the positive BM also. Using this spacing, we can find the real area. For that, we will get 314. Now, we have to apply the check for cracking. First, we need to find for minimum AST. We have already done that. The diameter of the steel should be less than the overall depth upon 8. For that, we will get 17.5. Our diameter is 10. It is less than 17.5. So, it will be safe. Then, we have to apply the check for spacing of steel. 300 mm is less than 3D. So, we have to select that. Our spacing is less than 300. So, it will be safe. Now, we are going to design the distribution reinforcement. For that, we have to provide the minimum reinforcement that we have already found, which is 168 mm square. Let us provide 8 mm diameter bars. Using this formula, we can find the spacing. Let us round this as 290. Then we have to apply the check for spacing. Our spacing is less than 450, so it will be safe. Now let us apply the check for shear stress. Using this formula, we can find that BU we have already calculated as 22.95 kN. For tau V, we will get 0.19. Then using this formula, we can find the percentage of steel as 0.26 for 0.25 tau c is 0.36 we need to find for 0.26 we can approximately take as 0.37 the value of k when overall depth is less than 150 is 1.3 we need to multiply tau c with 1.3 we will get 0.48 tau v is less than tau c k so it will be safe now let us apply the check for deflection in this equation we can apply all of the values fi is 415 using pt and fs from this chart for k we will get approximately 1.58 l upon d will be equal to 26 into k in this way for d we will get 73 which is less than our effective depth 120 so it will be safe here you can see the reinforcement details for the distribution bars we have kept 8 millimeter diameter at 290 millimeter spacing for the positive and negative rebars we have kept the diameter as 10 mm and spacing as 250 mm. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.